Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Proper Varian and today I'm here with a very special video because today we'll be taking a good look at Tales of Ireland. Tales of Ireland is a total conversion for Crusader Kings 3 that released literally just today. Make sure to go play it on the Steam Workshop via the link in the description. In this video I would like to give you an overview of the work done so far on the mod and what is to come for it. The team behind Tales of Ireland is a small but incredibly dedicated bunch led by Hotmar. They have worked hard to bring an island to life that in all likelihood most of you have no knowledge of whatsoever. It is a magical place filled with the legends of old, over 1000 counties and meticulously crafted starting conditions and modded mechanics. Now this video will be split into two sections. Initially I will explain the mythological background of the mod and fill you in on the basic lore. Then I will let you know about mechanics and features that come with the mod or will be implemented in the future. Take note that I will do my best to pronounce the Gaelic terms of the native Irish mythology correctly, but that I will likely fail in many if not all cases as I am sadly not at all familiar with the language. Also, please note that there are many different variants of the mythology of Ireland that I will be talking about as of course the stories were altered over time and we are not sure what the original originals truly looked like. On top of that, the mod has also taken some freedoms to change some of the details to make it so that, you know, gameplay is simply more interesting. Now let's get to the meat of this world. Irish mythology has many rich aspects, but the mod is primarily based on the Labor Gabala Eden, which is known in English as the Book of Invasions. Herein, an anonymous writer, most likely a Christian monk, explained the history of Ireland by merging ancient pagan myths with the story of the Bible. The goal was to natively connect Ireland to the teachings of the church and have it all make sense. What this leaves us with is quite an interesting view into ancient Irish storytelling while always distorting it with a whole bunch of Christian retconning. So yeah, things in the Libo Gabala Eden can get quite confusing at times but it still remains our best insight into Irish mythology. As mentioned before, the mod has gone ahead and altered details and aspects of the Libo Gabala Eden, taking out many of the most obvious Christian retcons to allow for a more rich and varied experience. At the very beginning, Ireland was just hanging out until Cassair, and she is, according to Christian scholars, supposedly a granddaughter of Noah himself and a valiant and strong leader of her people, arrived on Ireland's shores at Dunam Bark, known as the Bantry Bay in English. They had been advised to go to these lands to avoid the flood that was about to occur and so they did. At some point their luck seemingly ran out and after living in Ireland for a while the flood came for them and wiped out every single one of Cassair's people except for her husband Fintan MacBokra. Fintan turned himself into a salmon and escaped death. Subsequently, according to this canon law of Ireland, he would witness the passing of time and live through the history of Ireland, acting as a repository of knowledge and sometimes even an advisor to the High Kings. In the mod, this is altered slightly. Fintan still gets to be a salmon, but Cassair's people are not fully wiped off the map. Instead, they live a life of riches and wisdom in the south of Ireland where they landed. As a Cassarian, you can make Cassair herself proud by proclaiming the first Cassarian kingdom. It is up to you to lead your people and maybe all of Ireland into a new future. The next invaders of Ireland were led by Partalon, a man from Greece that coincidentally, according to Christian scholars, also appeared to be a descendant of Noah. He and his people arrived on the shores of Ireland and settled their newly claimed lands. Now, according to the Leborga Bala Eren, the Partolonians all perished to a plague that wiped out all 9,000 of them within just one week. The mod has similar to the Cassarians you saw previously decided to let a small number of Partolonians remain. In game, the Partolonians have been a suppressed kind of people that lost their fortune with a plague that killed so many of them. However, when the game starts, there may yet be hope for them. Their faith, related to their travel to Ireland, is one of the sea that allows them to declare wars even against faraway coastal realms, seeing as your people belong to the sea and all lands close to the ocean can be claimed by those that dare to enter the violent struggle for them. The descendants of Partalon are weakened and essentially already at the brink of death, but maybe you can bring them back. Now after the Partalonians, according to the Book of Invasions, came the third group of invaders, the Nemedians. Their leader, Nemed, was, according to Christian scholars, big surprise, also a descendant of Noah. He led his people to Ireland to live a good life and according to legend he came all the way from Scythia but it all came tumbling down. While they started their journey with 44 ships, only Nemed and his ship arrived. The other 43 ships sunk when the travelers spotted a golden tower in the sea and all but Nemed perished while arrogantly attempting to lay claim to said tower. As if this wasn't enough hardship already, the Nemedians were not just struck by a plague similar to the Partolonians but were also meeting a group of people so utterly terrible that they can't be described as anything but demons, the Fomorians. I didn't mention this for any of the previous settlers of Ireland, but before any of them arrived, one powerful race was always present throughout, the Fomorians. They are described in the Libor Gabala Eren as dark demons believed to symbolize all of the destructive forces of nature and they have lived in Ireland seemingly since time immemorial, worshipping darkness and practicing dark rituals. They lead long lives and want nothing more than the complete destruction of any of the invaders of the island that they consider their home. 
They have battled with all the peoples that made their way to Ireland and have persisted throughout. In game you can utilize a Cassus Belli that will help you purify the island or if you are on the other side of the battle try to strike down the Fomorians once and for all. Fomorians are all over the island and come in different variations that you will have to struggle against or for. As the Fomorians have always been in opposition to the invaders of Ireland they struggled against the Nemedians too. Once the plague that I mentioned before had weakened the Nemedians enough, the Fomorians did not hesitate and made them into tributaries, basically having them labor day in and day out only for Fomorian gain. Many Nemedians attempted to flee from the struggle and some of them sailed away for Greece. Once in Greece, they of course did not find peace and prosperity, as it seems to be a theme here, but rather were enslaved by the native Greeks for 230 years. After their hardship in Greece, the very core of their culture had of course changed from being Nemedians and so they were instead called Fierbolok, meaning as much as men of bags. It is unclear how they earned the name, but the common theory is that they were made to carry bags of soilless slaves and later on made even the harshest regions their home by dumping fertile soil on every barren piece of land they could find. All of this aside, the Fierbolok, when they returned, took up arms against the Fomorians like the Nemedians their ancestors had done before, but this time they were successful and crushed their long-lasting nemesis. They unified the island for the very first time in history and created the High Kingship. In-game, any duke that is prestigious enough and all kings and emperors can vote for the High King, attempting to bring legitimacy to their people's claim to the High Kingdom of Ireland. The Fierbolog reigned for a good amount of time and to this day carry the flame of vengeance in their heart, causing them to do whatever is necessary to further their permanent claim to the entire island. However, much like with basically all invaders of Ireland, the Fierbolok soon experienced some hardship. All the way back, when the Nemedians were struck down by plague and were enslaved by the Fomorians, some of them did not move all the way to Greece to become the Fierbolok, but instead sailed north. In the north, they would find great power in the form of the mother goddess Danu. Danu guided and protected them, taught them the secrets of long lifespans, magic and necromancy and asked for them to reclaim Ireland. And so they did. After only 37 years of the Fierbolog High Kings ruling over Ireland, they arrived at Tuata de Donon, the people of Danu. Their magic was incredibly powerful and on a historical meta level it is quite likely that the Tuata de Donon were essentially a main pantheon of the Gaelic people, symbolizing the opposite of the Fomorians, civilization, wisdom and beauty. The Tuata de Donon arrived under the King Nuada and struck down the Fierbolog who subsequently allied with the Fomorians in an attempt to oust their new common enemy. And indeed, the Tuata de Danan were bogged down in a long and strenuous war against the creatures and machinations of the Fomorians. According to the Christian writers of this story, the Tuata de Danan lost their hiking Nuada during this struggle and were enslaved by the Fomorians like many that came before them. But a hero by the name of Luch led an uprising and crushed the Fomorians. According to the Le Bala Eren, it would be then the people of Danu that ruled Ireland until the last of the canonical groups of invaders arrived, the Milesians. In the book, they too, of course, have a biblical background. They supposedly participated in building the Tower of Babel, left Egypt at the same time as the Israelites, and were advised by Moses himself to seek out an island without snakes as their lands. The Milesians traveled far and wide, and here is where the Milesians in the mod connect, they are slightly de-Christianized, after settling in in Iberia made the jump to Snake Free Island. Once on the island, they of course found the children of Danu, and after a short series of disputes, the Tuata de Danan agreed that the Malaysians should rule over this world, so Ireland, whereas they themselves would retreat into the other world. The other world in Gaelic and generally Celtic mythology is depicted as a magical place of overabundance, science, and civilization. Its inhabitants live a life of eternal youth and prosperity. If we strictly follow the Leborgabala Eren, the Malaysians were the last invaders of Ireland and are the ancestors of all Irish. The mod takes a different approach to add gameplay variety. Much like with all of the invading groups being present in the mod, the mod authors decided to separate the six invaders from the actual Celts. Instead, when the mod starts, the Malaysians have just been pushed into disarray as the Celts invaded en masse, bringing their culture, their rights and their religion to the island. The power vacuum that the Celts created after assaulting the Malaysian High Kingdom has opened the door for any of the invader groups to begin a struggle for all of Ireland. Indeed, magically, the old Nuada and Luch, the heroes of the Tuate de Nanan, have left the other world behind and have re-emerged onto Ireland in an attempt to reclaim what should be theirs. And so there are many smaller and larger details I did not mention in this general description of the groups you will find in the Tales of Ireland mod, but you will be happy to find out that the modders have implemented a variety of tooltip explanations as well as an initial explanatory event that will let you dive deeper into the lore of this world. With the basic lore out of the way, let's take a quick look at current and future gameplay features of this mod. The most prominent underlying mechanic must be the drastic change to development. Wealth in the island of old was mostly displayed by the amount of cattle one had at their disposal. Wars just to raid cattle are quite common as it does not only open you up for a new decision, but the general effect of cattle is tripled compared to the usual development effect in the vanilla game. Depending on the luck of a realm, you will see development values change drastically, leading to a fluid change of power in Ireland. 
Additionally, as showed before, the mod comes with various culture and religion specific actions one can take, with a special succession type that is even harsher than confederate partition but can be overcome if you are a strong enough ruler, adding agency to succession that the vanilla game lacks entirely. There are also some narrative events at the start of the game, in particular related to the weak remainder of the Malaysian High Kings. You also have a variety of unique regional men at arms that now are significantly stronger than in the vanilla base game, since the amount of any troops you get is significantly hampered by Ireland simply, well, not having tens of thousands of warriors. As men at arms are now significantly more important, so are of course knights. If you lose a capable warrior, you may very well be losing your only chance, even as a count, to beat the dukes, kings and high kings around you. You will also get access to various special buildings such as the Hill of Tara, the traditional inauguration place and seat of the High Kings of Ireland. There are also the Round Towers of Ireland that are said to have been built by the Nemedians, borrowing the strength of Gaelic Giants. Speaking of Gaelic Giants, one of the many Gaelic myths speaks of the Giants Causeway in the far north of the island that was created during the struggle between the Giants Fionn McCoyd and Ben Andonna. They threw rocks towards one another between Ireland and Scotland. Maybe, just maybe, you can even meet some of these legendary giants that now merely reside in the other world yourself if you are careful around the giant's causeway. On top of that, you have two lifestyle trees that have no focus for them but will rather automatically generate perk points through events and through your style of ruling. Is your rule one of war, you will see yourself within the tales of war, but is it a rule of peace and prosperity, you will become a part of the tales of abundance. And last but very much not least, you might be familiar with the myth of High Brazil, an island off the coast of Ireland that can rarely be seen but never be reached. In the mod, once the year 4950 rolls around, so 150 years after game start, you may or may not be visited by some of these folks via the new Northern Lords invasion Casus Belli. It must also be said, as detail rich and extraordinarily special the mod of Tales of Ireland is on its own, it is also a shining example of the unprecedented cooperation between modders in the CK3 community. The 3D holdings stem from the team behind the Lord of the Rings mod. The ability to choose one's heir out of all of the available ones stem from Lord's mod, and the unit models stem from Xandalos and Adrian PL's mod. I simply cannot stress enough just how beautiful it is to see the extended cooperation between modding teams like this, and that I have, in more than 1.5 decades of playing Paradox games, never seen cooperation on this scale. As you can see, the range of Tales of Ireland is already spectacular, but it will only get better from here. Many, many flavor events are planned, such as the resurfacing of the Cassarian Salmons of Knowledge, Leprechauns, Banshees, Halloween, the Fianna, as well as general gameplay events. There will also be various additions to decisions for the different groups of invaders, as well as an introduction of a system that will let you decide wars in one versus one combat as the Irish of old indeed did it. There will also be a magic system and the map will be expanded to the island of Mun. Speaking of the map, currently only few regions are handcrafted, but the team is currently working tirelessly on beautifying all of Ireland's regions, hopefully leading to a gorgeous map quite soon. Believe me when I say that this mod is merely in its infancy, but is already an utterly gorgeous piece of work. Don't sleep on this one. And with that being said, for now I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Play the mod, make sure to get it from the Steam Workshop, leave a like, a favorite, etc, etc. And most importantly, I would like to thank the members of the channel that are making videos such as this one possible, namely the Barons, the Counts and the Dukes. Thanks to all of you, this is something that can happen. If you also want to support the channel, then consider becoming a channel member, one of the Barons, Counts and Dukes. And most importantly, if you want to buy any of the Paradox games, then you can do that in my Nexus store. The link will be in the description. With that being said, later, alligator.